Welcome to Gold Coast Pet Butler's Boredom Buster and Enrichment Feeding video lesson. Here we're going to show you some easy um, and creative ways of keeping your dog or puppy entertained and keep giving them some much needed mental stimulation uh, to help fulfill them as, as a dog and use their natural dog instincts and in doing so helping to reduce a lot of or most of if not all of your um, inappropriate behaviors or what we deem inappropriate anyway uh, chewing digging barking that sort of thing and we'll talk about that more later first of all uh, one of the most common reasons that dogs get surrendered to shelters between the ages of 16 or sorry 6 and 18 months is boredom and boredom is the biggest killer of dogs under two um, it kills more dogs than parvo do, does in shelters and People may find that surprising, but it absolutely is true. Boredom-related problems are where a dog starts to show other problems like escaping or even aggression and frustration is the root of a lot of these issues that dogs end up in shelters for. And boredom can be displayed in many ways, digging, barking, chewing, escaping. When you have a puppy, your priority when it comes to helping your puppy prevent boredom issues is chew toy training. And chew toy training is, a, is about setting up the environment to ensure that you have success using play pens, crates, baby gates to limit your puppy's access to things that you don't want them to chew. If your puppy is unsupervised and has access to the whole house and the couch and whatever else is in the house, then they're going to chew the couch. That's what is there, that is what they're going to chew. And you might leave a few chew toys around on the floor and go, well, there's toys around. But if you haven't set up the environment so the puppy becomes hooked on these toys and under, and has those only as options to in order to help them get hooked, you're going to find that your puppy will chew other things. If they've got too many options, they can make bad choices basically. So limit those options through really good management and help them learn that these are your chew toys and then as they are mature and they, as they get older you can start giving them a little bit more freedom but in the early stages uh, and I'm talking first few months even a year or any in some case more cases more depending on the dog gi giving them free reign access to your house is basically treating your house like a chew toy so you have a big backyard that's great but it doesn't uh, help your dog in any way, shape or form prevent boredom. We need to dispel this myth that dogs don't get bored in a big backyard. A big backyard is just as boring as a small backyard. If I were to lock you in an empty four bedroom house and you had no internet, no radio, books, TV, nothing for your brain to do, you would be just as bored in that empty um, four bedroom house as you would in a one bedroom unit. It was just bigger, that's all. So it's the quality and variety of the stimulation that you provide for your dog that's important, not the size of the backyard. So give your dog a job. Keeping your dog amused is not uh, difficult. It is a little bit time consuming. You, need, you just need to put a bit of effort into it and, and it's pretty easy and we'll show you how. And some basic knowledge of dog behaviour will help you utilise your dog's natural instincts to keep them occupied and on task and give them mentally challenging things to do or jobs that they like to do. First of all, is your dog on social security or do they earn their daily wage of food? This is really important. Ditching the bowl and getting your dog working for food is one of the easiest ways to prevent a lot of problem behaviours that we see in dogs. And dogs are natural hunters, therefore it's easy to utilise their natural instinct for them to work and play for their food. And asking them to work and play for their food is not cruel, it's enriching their life, it's giving the brain something to do. When we look at dogs, domestic dogs versus wild dogs, dogs were bred originally to work with uh, humans in some form, and this may be farm work like herding, guarding or hunting. And thousands of years of domestication has not taken away those innate traits in our dogs. And that those innate traits being searching for things to do as well. 
in the wild, an animal may spend up to about 80% of their awake time searching for, acquiring and eating their food. So searching, chasing, catching, killing, eating. That They spend about 80% of their awake time doing that. And zoos around the world have found the benefits of enrichment feeding their captive animals by allowing those animals to hunt and scavenge in the way that they would normally hunt and scavenge in the wild. And you see documentaries all the time where zoos are hiding food in the animal's enclosure for breakfast and the animal is let out in the morning and that is what the animal does. It hunt and scavenges for their food using those natural instincts just like they would in the wild. So food, we need it all to survive and enrichment feeding for your dogs means adding something to their day to make it more meaningful and more rewarding to the dog. And the goal of enrichment feeding is to increase the amount of time it takes your dog to eat its food and in doing so, encourage mental and physical activity. Scatter feeding. Scatter feeding is one of the easiest ways of giving your dog a job and giving their brain something to do. Before you leave for work, instead of feeding your dog their kibble for breakfast in the bowl for nothing, go outside. This is when a big back backyard comes in handy, really. Go outside and scatter the food all over your backyard as far as you can. This is called scatter feeding and it will keep your dog busy hunting for their food and they may not even notice you've gone. So if you've got a dog start that barks at the gate, for example, or whines at the gate when you leave, then scatter feeding can help prevent that because, hey, they're out there sniffing and they might even look at the gate a little bit, but they'll quickly go back to their food, especially if it's their breakfast because they're going to be hungry. So you start out teaching this in small games, placing out small amounts of food and encourage your dog to find it. And as they get the hang of it, they'll know exactly what the game's all about very, very quickly. Enrichment feeding is, uh, as I said, used to help problem behaviours. And those behaviours can be things like separation anxiety, destruction behaviours or destructive behaviours, sorry, and barking due to boredom. And there's no wrong way to enrichment feed. But we recommend incorporating some of their daily diet into the feeding process rather than just treats on top of their mainly uh, main, main diet. There's no reason you can't easily add in their normal daily diet, whether it be kibble or raw or a combination of both. So start off by feeding one meal a day, then you can gradually build up uh, and as many meals a day as you like. As long as they don't eat in excess of what they would normally get for free in a bowl, then that's absolutely fine. Find activities and routines which work for you and have several different activities and preparing them ahead of time helps. So once they get the hang of Kongs and things like that, which I'll talk about, you can start to prepare on weekends and freeze them. Be creative and persistent and if it doesn't, uh, if your dog doesn't eat it, you've probably made it too hard too soon in the early stages of their learning how to play with these games. Uh, make it easier next time and know that not everything is going to work for you and your dog and that's cool, that's fine, you just need to find what works for you, your dog and your routine. So Kongs, Kongs are fun, tough and best when stuffed. And most puppy owners or dog owners have seen these Kongs and have a reasonable idea of how to use them, but we're going to show you to the whole next new level. Kongs have been recommended by vets and uh, dog trainers and behaviours all over the world for 30 to 40 years now to help manage problem behaviours in dogs. So we'll give you some ideas. The key to teaching your dog to play with a Kong to work for their food is be, help your dog be successful in the very early stages. Make it easy to get food from the Kong and then as your dog starts to get better at the game, because let's face it, everything your dog does is a game, start making it harder and, make, and by packing the food in more tightly into the Kong. The level of difficulty should reflect the dog's level of experience and skills. So if your dog is a beginner or relative beginner, it should be really quite easy to get the food out. And the Kong quests at the bottom of that picture to the left, the um, banana shaped ones, I really like those as a beginner Kong. They're not tough though like the other ones, so they're not for heavy chewers to be left unsupervised with. Uh, they are fairly, fairly soft, but I like them as a beginner one because they're 
for that reason because the dog can be more successful they can get food out they can lick the food out they're great for puppies to start to learn what this game of enrichment feeding toys is all about and then you've got at the top of the picture the normal core range of kongs you've got the pink and blue the puppy for puppies up to about nine months of age the red classic for average everyday chewers and the black extreme for extreme chewers so if your dog has chewed the red one or the or the puppy ones then and they're a pretty powerful chewer and they get through things fairly quickly even decent toys fairly quickly then the extreme is the way to go and if your dog actually chews a Kong and destroys it in a quick amount of time, and it can happen, there is no guarantee that that won't happen, and Kong will tell you that themselves, um, you can go up a size or two in the Kong itself because having it a bigger Kong makes it harder for the dog to get downward pressure from their jaws onto it. It's not to say they won't destroy the bigger one eventually. It just should be harder and last longer for them to do so. So recipes, if you feed your dog kibble, dry, dry food, you can soak some in some hot water and when it's cool, spoon it into the Kong. And for experienced Kongs, uh, sorry, experienced um, dogs, you can freeze that for an extra challenge. My guys, if I soak kibble in it and stuff it into a Kong and freeze it, I'll give it to them straight out of the freezer and that'll take them 45 minutes to an hour to get that food out. Any, any food that is safe for your dog to eat can be put in a conch. So here we've got some raw, raw food in the pictures, in the quests as well, and some sardines making experience popping out as well. Lately there has been an influx of other products, and I'm going to show you a few. Licky mats and slow feeders are some of those and some of my favourites. Here's a range of licky mats. They're for dogs that are they help slow down gulpers, and they provide a fun and interesting way to spend their time, your dog's time eating. So they literally, you can put raw food, you can put kibble or a little bit of both. Uh, they, you spread the food out in the mat and it, it separates it. For raw food, it makes it stick to it a little bit and you mush it down. And your dog has to lick it out and spend some quality time sniffing and licking. And dogs love that. And it's really, really important for them to do that. So that helps provide them with some mental challenges. The slow feeder, the pink slow feeder to the right is great. I can spread out a heap of raw food and what a bit of kibble and hit that in that. And one of my guys loves that. The licky mat uh, torquies one in the uh, bottom left. That is a tougher version of the licky mats. There are softer ones and there are tougher ones. Again, always under supervision to make sure that your dog or your puppy doesn't chew it. And the licky bowl is really awesome as well. And that wobbles when they eat out of it. There's also another one which I didn't put in there and I probably should have is a licky bowl, that suction cap on the back that you can put on the um, window or on the fridge. And it's actually really, really handy for grooming your dog. So you put some raw food on it or yogurt or something and stick it to the fridge. And while your dog is licking at it, you can be brushing your dog. And it's awesome for dogs that don't like to be brushed because it helps create that positive association and also keep them busy and, and or young pups that can't sit still when they're getting groomed it, and want to bite at the brush. You do that and it keeps them occupied for a short amount of time. And you can quickly get some brushing done. And that helps build that positive association to being brushed, which is really important for dogs to have. Snuffle mats, balls and baskets. Here is a collection of snuffle products where you bury dry treats in this one. This is not a raw feeding uh, toy. And this is something you can home make or you can purchase as well. And it is something that you put their dry food in and you bury it in amongst the fabric, the, the, the strips of fabric there. And your dog has to sniff and snuffle their way through it in order to work for their food and it's a great way to keep your puppy occupied for 10 minutes while you're trying to get ready for work or whatever you're trying to do cook dinner it doesn't matter and it helps give them their brain something to do and to chill out and you might give them this in their playpen so that they actually have to start to settle down here we have a video of eight week old luna the border collie puppy playing with her snuffle mat this is outside, obviously, but this can be inside, outside, it doesn't really matter.
So in this one, she's pretty hell-bent on getting that treat out of whatever's in that particular spot. And here she's going to give it a dig. So as I said, that's a really good way of uh, you giving your puppy something to do. The Kong Wobbler is one of my all-time favourite store-bought enrichment toys for dogs, and it simply it becomes an enri uh, sorry an interactive food bowl which your dog has to push around to get their food out. Wobblers for beginners, for dogs that are new to the wobbler, you can open it up and uh, feed a meal or two, and I'm going to show you a video on that shortly. Uh, and also chuck in a big chunk of cooked chicken or cooked steak, that can often help when you start to close it up. Uh, that can often help to keep their motivation quite high to push this thing around, especially if they don't get a payoff fairly quickly. So here is a video of a 10-week-old Dakota, the German Shepherd, learning to play with the wobbler. You'll see I've put it in a few steps for you. Here we've got the wobbler open and just sitting there and she's eating some kibble off the heavy base of the wobbler. That's a sandy base inside and it wobbles as I said. We put the kibble inside here on step two and just sat the top on top of it so that she knocks it off and bingo jackpot she gets a big payoff for that pushing that wobbler around. So you just need to do this a couple of times and then you'll start to seal it up. And here it is with her sealed up. She thinks she's got to bite this one. Some dogs will try and bite it, that's fine. They've just got to figure out it's pushing, not biting. And lo and behold, there she goes. She gets her treat out. As I said, you can put in a good chunky cooked piece of meat to make it at that stage a little bit more enticing and a little bit more motivating. But that's a nice, easy way of introducing your puppy or your dog to the Kong Wobbler so that they are successful ASAP. So what about for wobbler experts? Wobbler experts can start to get the food out fairly quickly. So you just need to be a little bit creative. In here, we've put in some scrunched up paper to work as a maze to uh, for the food to go through in order to get out of the wobbler. And you can play with different uh, levels of scrunched up paper, if you like to call it, but you can find out what works for you. So just shoving things in there that will help slow down the food coming out is all you need to do. And that's why the wobbler is one of the best toys, because it's one of the few that you can actually do that with. Other chew toys, raw meaty bones. Dogs need raw bones and never cooked bones. And everyone has an opinion on that and that's fine. Uh, my opinion is raw bones and giving them as a meal a couple of times or two, three times a week at, as I said, meal times can help with cleaning their teeth, but it also helps with chewing for young dogs in particular. So raw bones in here, we've got some brisket bones and it looks like uh, Luna, the border collie puppy is playing with a, a, is a roo neck or a kangaroo or a lamb neck. Or, I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, they're both having a, a great time. Other chews. You've got lamb ears that we've got over here for a young puppy. Beef ears for an adolescent puppy. Nice big chews, both natural, both just dried out. Down the bottom here, we've got these two guys with eating carrots. They're just a raw carrot as a chew. And you can absolutely give your dog just a raw carrot to chew. And they will love it. And you can see around here, they've destroyed a toy and that's fine. Toys are there to be destroyed. They're not there to look good in a pile of toys. Toys will be destroyed and if they're destroying their toy at least they're not touching the couch or anything that's in here. And then over here we've got Jem eating a frozen salmon head and he is devouring that and again just like a bone they can eat raw salmon no problem at all and it's actually the oils in the in the fish it's very very good for them. So toys speaking of toys Having toys for your dog is vital and everyone knows that. But the key is rotating toys, having a selection. So you've got a Monday toys, Tuesday toys, Wednesday toys, because that helps them stay new. That helps them keep their value for your dog because if they're around 24-7, seven, seven days a week, then they become boring toys just like they do to children. 
So keeping the, the toys rotated can help. Knot ropes can be fairly strong for most dogs and inexpensive. You can soak them in a pot of warm chicken broth and let them to dry, let them dry. And then they've got uh, some flavor that your dog will be more likely attracted to if they don't pay much attention to a knot rope. But you will probably have to renew it every few days. Doggy play dates are awesome for keeping your dogs uh, mentally stimulated and physically, obviously, as well. So, you know, meet up with some friends and you might do doggy daycare where you drop dogs off to each other or just go and meet for a drink and a, or a coffee or something and giving them play dates. If your dog enjoys playing, if you've got one dog and they enjoy playing with another dog so much and you think, oh, I'm going to get my get another dog, don't get a pet for your pet. Get another dog because you want an, another dog and you can afford another dog. Don't get another dog to solve any problem behaviours of your first dog because quite often you'll end up with two bored dogs and then you've got more than twice the amount of problems to deal with. Make your yard an adventure playground. Here we've got a digging pit for the Westie up in the top right corner. So that can be sand, it can be dirt, you bury bickies, toys, bones, whatnot in there and you take the dog over there and dig it up in front of them and have a big play and, and so your dog learns when they dig in here good stuff happens and when they're digging in the garden they're not getting the same sort of reinforcement from the digging pit so they will hopefully start to redirect their digging to an appropriate area like the digging pit the thing with digging is we see so many times people say how do I stop my dog digging I if I had a dollar every time I heard that expecting your dog to stop digging is unrealistic and unfair dogs dig that's what they do so providing them with somewhere where they're allowed to dig is vital for their mental welfare. If your dog loves to dig, let them dig. Just provide somewhere for it that, that, that it can happen and start reinforcing them for digging in that spot by bury, burying things that they like in the digging pit. The Westie's got a fairly fancy, you know, uh, built one there in the in the backyard but you can use simply uh, something like the shell clam pool that we've got here also where shimmy's laying in her pool and you can put dirt or sand in one of those as well and they're twenty dollars at kmart roughly um speaking of pools shimmy loves her pool she'll lay in there for half an hour if you let her and she uh, just dips in so some dogs will lay in water like this others just like to walk through it others like to dig in it whatever your dog likes to do that's fine as you know do it Put it somewhere where it doesn't matter if it makes a bit of a mess. Your dog loves to dig and that's what's important and it's really important for them to do that sort of thing. And if we don't want digging in our backyard, we probably shouldn't have a dog. Training. Training is more than teaching your dog to sit, drop or come when called. It's about opening the lines of communication between you and your dog. Uh, so you've got the basics that you can teach them, the essential manners to make living with them more uh, easy, pleasurable and rewarding. But then training in dog sports can also prevent boredom as well. So things like agility and fly ball and there's a whole range of dog sports that you can go to and a lot of them teach in local clubs or you can do some training online. But teaching your dog dog sports is a bit like taking the kids to netball every weekend and it's great fun and it's a great way to get out some energy for both of you. Daily walks and exercise. Most dogs are happy with that. Uh, if you walk about 30 minutes, you can. that's enough for most dogs. Some working breeds might need a little bit more. But a lot of people think that if they uh, keep walking, exercising their bored dog, it will prevent boredom. What it really does is help make your dog fitter. And the fitter your dog is, the more exercise they need. So you have that vicious cycle of, the fitter they get, the more they need to be sustained, the more they need to be happy, so you end up walking more and more and more. So just think about the mental exercises that we've shown you in, in this presentation because that's what helps tire your dog out as well. And in some respect, it will tire them out more because some working breeds, you just won't tire them out with a walk and a run. It just doesn't happen. Your dog needs you. Dogs who constantly live in the backyard are more likely to show these problem behaviours. Dogs are social animals. They live in a family structure and they need to be included, included in their family activities. We bring them into our lives. We're asking them to live with us, but then we're isolating them in the backyard. And that doesn't mean you get another dog because, like I said, you end up with two dogs that have the same sort of issues. 
So bringing them inside and being part of the family is what's important to them. When you want to bring them inside, you don't have to let them on the couch like we had in the previous slide. That is fine. If you want to give them only certain areas, when especially if you're not there to watch, you can do that through some fairly inexpensive and easy management strategies. Uh, things like baby gates here, play pens, crates, whatnot. So they have access to only certain areas of the house. And that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. They don't have to have free access to the whole house, especially young dogs, because they're going to chew the house. It's that simple. So have an area sectioned off in the house where they literally just have a room or a back room or something like that so that you're able to leave them unsupervised that they're not going to make a mess everywhere. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please contact us via Facebook on at Gold Coast Pet Butler or info at Gold Coast Pet Butler email and our website. Thank you.